As we are getting ready to explore the solar system, imagine our robots have access to 3D printers. Not only they could make their own parts, they could build infrastructures and uh, faraway planets. That day is coming. We're in our laboratories at small scale doing that very thing. So we see a, a bright future with this type of technology where our machines could prepare for human explorers. My name is Reza Namovi. I'm a research engineer, test pilot, and a mechanical engineer in the aerospace department of Caltech. I work on automobiles, aircrafts, boats, and with the rise of drones, uh, I saw a uh, potential to use my mechanical expertise and also my piloting skills as an RC pilot to really uh, focus on this advancement of drone technology and now aerospace. Caltech's uniqueness comes in the in research, we're doing the most advanced research, like putting a uh, pickup sized vehicle on the surface of Mars with precision accuracy. That is not easy to do. And we're doing it over and over now, successfully. One that's really sparked interest and you know, it's become a game changer is the Mars helicopter. The Mars helicopter was a concept between JPL and Caltech. We developed a uh, test apparatus here. We created a wind generator that was able to mimic the wind conditions. And with JPL, we were successful in deploying the Mars helicopter to Mars atmosphere and had around 70-ish flights successfully. That was a big game changer. Of course, the Mars rovers, but now we have uh, this new M4 robot. Not only is a rover, but is also a flyer. So we're hoping that in the near future, we'll be able to send a machine not only to Mars, but other planets that, are, that we are capable of flying in those atmospheres. We are very successful in proving our concepts. We have been invited to many uh, events like the robotics show in Abu Dhabi, Late last year, two weeks ago, we were in Florida for the Mars conference. We were invited specifically because of the robots that are 3D printed. People want to know how that's possible and why we're successful. And it's purely because of this technology. One thing that makes CAST uh, special is that we're a multidisciplinary laboratory where all of the different departments work together. We're the aerospace department, but we have the geology department, we have the machine learning robotics department, and we have mechanical engineering department. So we all come to this laboratory together to fill the gap of what's needed. You know, Mars doesn't just require a, a machine, it also requires geology. You need biology in space to understand, you know, what other lives are out there. So all of the different, different departments together really make up what we're doing here in CAST. Before uh, additive manufacturing, the conventional method of designing a part from conceptual design and, and a uh, CAD model program software, it was a gruesome uh, process. And it was it's very costly as well, because if the part is not correct, then we would have to go back and start over. With additive manufacturing, we're able to reiterate much faster and more cost-effective. A high-paced environment laboratory like CAST, rapid manufacturing is a huge game changer. We're able to take our concepts to work in prototypes and align our scientists to uh, take credit for their own work because we're able to mature the idea so rapidly. Fraction, maybe 20% of what it would have taken previously to achieve a task where our counterparts may not have that resource. It is uh, imperative that we have these technologies at our disposal. And as uh, the technology got more uh, mature, we were able to push those materials that we design and manufacture with additive manufacturing for real world scenarios. There are components that are in space, even on the space station right now that were 3D printed. Everyone's really looking at the same technology and our researchers, our students put so much emphasis on their research and their uh, PhDs. If we're able to take ideas and bring it to fruition. That means our students are much more successful and putting their names on the technology versus the next person who might have been in line. So being able to prototype our ideas into a working model, testing and proving it has been the key element to our success. Every project since the 3D printing became uh, available really gave us that idea of rapid manufacturing versus the prior methods. Having a 22 IDEX in our lab is a huge game changer. It allows us to rapidly prototype our, our concept ideas to a working model. We actually take that working model into the harshest environments and prove that it, we're capable of performing the tasks that were requested of that technology. 
when we were looking at a uh, 3D printer that, that could handle the materials we were looking for, the size of the materials, we looked online and there was one company that stood out more than anyone else, Vision Miner. They have intuitive videos. They were very easy to get a hold of. And as soon as we were in contact, it felt like it was a perfect uh, relationship for us. We have been successful from the very first day we opened communication with Vision Miner. And uh, the technology speaks for itself. We bought many 3D printers over the years, but the support was not there. When we purchased our uh, latest uh, 22 IDEX from Vision Miner, first day they were there to help us from setup to any failures that we came across with, especially with the carbon fiber peak. So they were able to show us different processes that they, uh, they were successful with, and we adapted them. And right away from the first day, we were able to make useful parts. And anyone that's worked with those types of printers, you know that that's not an easy task. The first time we applied additive manufacturing, we weren't sure how far we could push the material. Is it just for testing fitting or is it a proof of concept visually? Or can we actually use it in a real world scenario? Can we put parts that are going to hold to 10 kilos of thrust? That was really the big question and challenge. How far can we push these materials? Can they actually survive maybe in the vacuum of space or on the harsh environment of Mars? One of our moonshots, which was the flying ambulance, autonomous flying ambulance. We were building a uh, fifth scale model of, let's say size of a, a Prius that had lifting thrusters and wings that were foldable. And we wanted to show the concept of being able to get into tight places, maybe a single lane on a freeway that was open to land to help a massive accident. So we were able to bring that technology to life by, by uh, using 3D printer and additive manufacturing. So that was the first real test that we did with additive manufacturing was very successful. So materials like carbon fiber peak were very attractive to us, but not a lot of machines could build large volume parts without a lot of failure. And as you can see behind me, these robots show large wheels and components that were 3D printed. So it was able to drive on these hard surfaces, but also able to transform into a flying machine. So we have a wheel that has a drive motor and we have a thruster that creates lift as a separate item. We have to build the two into each other. It has to be light and it has to be strong, both uh, the environment they're in, temperature-wise, and the surfaces. This printer really proved its capabilities by printing such a wheel that could handle those conditions and uh, be able to fly around the, on the thruster. 90% of this robot was printed on the 22 IDEX. Every joint, every wheel, the chassis, uh, the components that hold the electronics inside were all 3D printed. The rest is really just the hardware that makes it up and the electronics. We wanted to print something with minimal screws and uh, assembly as possible. So the 3D printer, large volume 3D printer, allowed us to uh, create a monocoque that everything just assembled inside. And this is this is really a big game changer. The reason the IDEX and uh, using the materials it offers, this high temperature materials like carbon fiber peak, is the previous materials are brittle. They weren't holding up to high temperatures. It's great that you're in 70 degrees, but when you go out to the desert and it's 130 degrees, the plastics were uh, morphing and melting, losing shape, especially wheels. So we really had to look at materials that were a lot stronger. We re highly rely on these machines working day and night. High strength, high temperature materials were the two main criteria, and reliability. So the IDEX, you know, filled that gap for us. Printing with high temperature materials really advanced our uh, capabilities because we are able to make parts that work in the real world environment. When it comes to open materials, we initially started with PLAs and then there were the ABS. They were great for prototyping, building models at home. But when it comes to science and research, we have to uh, quantify the materials at a scientific level. It, we have to prove that the physics works out. You, know, you just cannot print a part and say, this is this material, that material. It has to be quantifiable at a scientific level for, uh, for our peers to accept it, JPO to accept it for a uh, space project. The 
this is the future, you know? We're starting to phase away old manufacturing capabilities. If we could print something without cutting a solid material like aluminum down to the part you need, we're doing it in the opposite method where we're building without loss. As long as the print goes well, you're actually very efficient and effective in design and manufacturing versus previous methods. If you haven't used 3D printers or you're skeptical about using 3D printers, rest assured that these modern machines are producing high quality, high strength, precise parts from your basic daily household component that was broken to technological parts here at, at Advanced University. It doesn't matter. We are capable of making anything just as good as its counterparts. If there's a part that something like carbon fiber peak could be just as viable. The final thoughts I would have about additive manufacturing, especially in regards to the 22 IDEX, is what a game changer. It has been a godsend to our uh, machines that we have for uh, manufacturing. When the, the 3D printers arrived here, we were able to speed up the process of development. When that happened, our leadership sees our potential and continuously tasks us to, to meet milestones in a shorter period of time where now we're taking ideas that would take a year or two years and finishing in three months. So I would say in the last two years, I've gone to five different major events where I had to develop something from idea to a concept within three months. There's no other way this could have happened. The 3D technology has really become the main method already. We believe that it's only gonna get better. This is a uh, learning curve. It doesn't happen overnight, definitely give it some time. Fortunately, there's so much content. Vision Miner has done such a good job with uh, proving the capabilities of the machine there. They've really been here with us every step of the way to make sure we're successful. So learn from other people's successes. Do not give up and you will be successful.